All right, so I welcome you to today's session. If you'd like to communicate with me, please use the chat, okay? Because I muted everyone and you wouldn't be able to unmute yourself to talk to me so that I will be the only voice you are hearing, okay? So if you if you need to communicate with me, please use the chat, all right? Okay. So I welcome you to today's session. Well, we're going to be talking about the principles to a proper human diet, okay? I will teach you very simply the basics on how to eat properly, all right? And um, this session is not going to take a lot of time. In about 20 to 30 minutes, we are done, all right? So let's get into it. The first thing I want to uh, notify you of is security, okay? So I would never call you to inform you about these Zoom sessions. I don't need to call you personally to tell you about my sessions. All right. So I would post the um, the topic, the Zoom link on the group, and I would also send you an email as well. Okay. So nobody has to call you. I don't have to call you to inform you about my sessions. So if you get a call saying Rita is hosting a session, please share the Zoom code with me etc. Please do not listen to that person and don't send quotes to any unknown numbers over the phone. Okay, this applies to so many things, even, you know, when it comes to your pains, you know, regarding your banks. Okay, so please don't release quotes to anyone. Okay, and make sure that you have your two-step verification on on WhatsApp so that, uh, you know, if, if someone is trying to hack into your WhatsApp account, um, WhatsApp would notify you and tell you directly that you should not give this code out if you are not the one initiating the login. All right, so please let's uh, protect ourselves, okay? So let's get straight into it. The first principle to a healthy, proper human diet. First off, do you think that there is a proper human diet? Do you think that there is a specific way that human beings should eat? Or we can just eat anything that we like and we expect to be in good health. Hmm? And if there is a proper human diet, how come that we are not taught about it in schools? How come even our healthcare providers do not inform us about it, especially when it is very, very important for good health? Hmm? So this, will, this is what we are going to be talking about today. The principles, what are the things you should look out for when you look at your plate of food, okay? To know whether or not you are eating like a human being should eat, okay? And you know that if you deter from this proper human diet, you are setting yourself up for destruction, okay? And many other in, um, diseases, inflammations, medications, body pains, etc. okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is nutrient density. And this simply means you eating foods that, are, that have a lot of nutrients, that provide you with nutrients, Okay, because the first function of your food is not for enjoyment. The first function of your food that you eat is to nourish you. So there are some essential fatty acids. There are some essential amino acids. There are some essential minerals and vitamins and macronutrients that you cannot do without. Okay, your body requires that you actually eat these things if not, the, your body wouldn't make it on its own. So you have to eat it for proper, you know, functioning of your body system, okay? Without it, then you are just going to die before your time and you would experience all manner of things because you are not giving your body what it needs. There are other uh, fatty acids and amino acids, et cetera, that your body does not require you to consume. Your body would just make it on its own. All right, but if you do not provide your body with the ones you are supposed to eat, how can it make the ones you are not supposed to eat? Okay, so without these essential acids, fatty acids, amino acids, minerals, and vitamins, you will die quicker than you expect to. Okay, now to do this efficiently without overeating many things that you are not supposed to eat, you have to consume nutrient dense foods. Okay. Now you you may hear all sorts of things like um, plant foods being the most nutrient dense or certain products being the most nutrient dense. The most nutrient dense food in this world is red meat. Okay, that's the honest truth of it. There is no food that can provide you with all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals and everything that you need 
but optimal body function in more than red meat. It doesn't mean that if you combine a few foods here and there, you wouldn't get it, but the singular food on this planet that you would, that you would consume and fetch you the most nutrients and vitamins and you know all the things that you may need for your body functioning in just one piece is red meat. Specifically, if you would like to go um, deeper than red meat, then organ meat. So things like liver, um, liver, heart, brain, you know, organs of animals, not human beings, okay? <laughs> but organs of different animals that you can actually eat and consume, okay? That's the best nutrient-dense food for you to eat in this world, okay? So other foods, like I've said, they are actually healthy for you. It's just not as dense as red meat when it comes to nutrition, okay? So you can have a, a, a donut or a or pizza, or you can eat a, a whole plate of rice and stew, you know, or you can eat something that's very high in sugar, like processed foods. And that thing will be completely lacking of nutrients that your body needs to function well. So what you did is you just ate a whole plate of nothing. Okay. You just ate a whole plate to just satisfy your 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 cravings or your hunger without your body actually getting that first primary function that it needs from your plates of food okay so talk and look out more for nutrient dense foods as opposed to foods that just satisfy and fill your stomach okay doing that then you know you are one step ahead or should i say you 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 are now in the on the road of optimal health, okay, when it comes to your plate of food, okay? Now, the second thing I want you to know is that you don't actually need carbohydrates for you to function and be alive in this world, okay? There is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. If you never ate another carbohydrate again in your life, you would, you would do well, okay? You would do so well that you would even flourish more than people that are eating carbohydrate foods, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that if you eat carbohydrates, you know, it's totally harmful to your health. People can eat carbohydrates and eat it optimally. And, you know, they are still in perfect shape. They are still in good health because they eat in moderation, okay? It's not as if you can never have a pizza or you can never have a donut or you can never have, you know, all these sweet things. But the thing is, do you eat it in moderation? And if you never ate another pizza or sugary food or donut or carbohydrates, especially things like your rice, your bread, you know your carbohydrate foods, okay? If you never ate them again, you would flourish. Your body does not demand that you eat these carbohydrates for you to be healthy, okay? So you can eat carbs. And if you want to eat carbs, like I said, eat in moderation. The, the, um, the amount of carbohydrates a normal human being should eat or you know the recommended value is 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrates, okay? But when you start going above that number, that's where things get hard and difficult for your body system, okay? And begins to cause these um, inflammations and oxidative stress that lead you and put you on the path to poor health, okay? However, if you completely stop eating carbohydrates, you will do well, okay? You will do even better than those people who are taking uh, carbohydrates, okay? Now, the third thing I want to point out is satiety, okay? Now, satiety is a sense of fullness. That's um, your body's way of telling you, okay, you have eaten enough for the day, okay? Put that plate down, you are, you, you, you are full, okay? Now, this satiety is caused by some certain hormones in your body. And there are some certain foods that promote and decline or decline this human satiety, Okay, so when you eat more nutrient-dense foods, it promotes satiety, okay? You, you, you feel full, okay, after eating, all right? There is something that I have noticed. Whenever I, I want to eat um, eba and soup, okay, and I start with my meat first or my protein that is in my soup, I realize that I actually eat less than what I am supposed to eat, okay? I wouldn't be able to finish that um the the size of ever that i have now it's one or two things it's either because i have been eating my eba before i eat my soup for the past how many years since i've been eating eba and soup you know we don't usually eat our meat or our protein first you know so it's either that or because i am eating a food that is nutrient dense my body now you know these, these hormones that are meant to produce this satiety are active and they tell me okay you have to stop eating now you are full 
But when you begin to eat this processed and nutrient devoid foods, it causes your satiety to decline and it makes you eat more. So that's why you can eat um, foods that are very, very high in carbs and you will still be hungry afterwards, okay? You, you, you can finish eating a whole plate of eba, okay? And you are craving soft drink in the next hour. I kid you not, okay? So eating processed and foods that are nutrient devoid, why do you think that when, you, when it comes to, you know, all these processed foods and fast foods, you always want to eat more. You're always craving it more and more. It, de it declines your, your, your satiety and it makes you want to eat more, okay? So to stop overeating, hmm? if you ever feel bad that you are eating more than you should, to stop overeating, you need a diet that is rich in natural proteins and fats, these natural proteins and fats is what is going to make and promote your body's satiety. Okay, and it will move your hunger hormones in the right direction and it will cause you to eat less, causing you to lose weight. All right. Now, another thing I want to point out is your fasting. Okay. Fasting is a part of the human diet. Okay. Fasting is not something that you do to punish yourself, it's actually part of your diet. Okay, it's it's essential, it is important when it comes to dieting and you eating well, you have to give your body space to clean up. You have to give your body space to digest and to absorb the nutrients that you have consumed, all right? So you not eating is a part of your human diet. Now you already fast for about eight hours a day, which is when you are sleeping, okay? And that's when your body does most of its repair, all right? If you now add an additional four hours, let's assume you add four hours, um, two hours, before you go to bed and two hours when you wake up or you or when you wake up you extend your fast by four hours more then it means that you are now fasting for 12 hours and you are eating for 12 hours okay and you know you are not eating for the entire 12 hours okay you may just have three meals here and there or you know two meals or even one meal in that 12 hour window okay but fasting gives your body some time to 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 move fat and to move hormones in the right direction. Now, if you are on a high carbohydrate diet, it is impossible for you to fast more than 10 hours a day, okay? If you are on a very high carbohydrate diet, it is very, very difficult, except you are doing it for religious purposes and you absolutely cannot break your fast, okay? It's quite hard for you to fast more than 10 hours a day because you feel like you are starved, Okay, and that's that's the um, unhealthy thing about it because you always have to consume refined carbs over and over and over again because they are not nutrient dense. Okay, so if you are on a very high carb diet, then you would feel like you know, if you fast for a little while or more than ten hours, it would be as 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 though you know you you want to faint or you haven't eaten in three days. Okay. So as you eat more nutrient dense foods, as you eat more natural foods, you will see that you will not be looking for foods to champ, 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 champ here and there, you know, looking for something to always put in your mouth here and there at every little convenience. You know, some of you, when you, when you just sit down and you want to work, it's like, you know, you need something to chew on. Okay. All the time. The reason for that is that you are consuming either very high carbohydrates or very high processed foods, or you are not taking in enough protein and fats in your diet. Okay. So if you can make a little change by just adding that four hours additional to your fasting night time, you know, if you can add that additional four hours, even if you cannot fast to 12 or fast to three or fast to six, if you can just fast for that, just extend that night fast for about four hours more, you are making a difference already. Okay. In your overall health. All right. So fasting is very, very crucial. And the other thing we have is ancestral appropriateness, okay? So this simply means that you should focus on eating foods that human beings have eaten for our entire existence on this earth, okay? So eat lots of meat. Our ancestors ate lots of meat, lots of plant foods, lots of seafoods, pastures, eggs, anything that comes in raw form from nature that you don't have to do a lot to so simply put it on your plate is healthy for you. Okay, anything that you that you get from nature in its raw form that doesn't have to go through so much processing is very healthy for you. And you have to also be conscious of foods that came in a thousand or a hundred years ago. So things like vegetable oils. Ancestors didn't know what vegetable oils were or are. Okay, 
foods that come in packages, grain foods like, like bread, ultra processed foods, avoid all these things, okay? And the truth of this matter is that there are no long-term studies that show that, okay, vegetable oil is actually healthy for you. If we want to debate whether vegetable oil is good or, or, or bad for you, there are no long-term consistent studies that show that it's actually good for you or that, you know, consuming vegetable oil over a very large amount of time or over a very um, long period of time is beneficial to your health or that consuming high carbohydrate foods is beneficial to your health. What you would see is that it would actually make you worse or make you a diabetic patient if it gets to that extent, okay? So how come we are trying to make these new foods look like they are good and we are not trying to demonize the healthy ones that have been in existence or that come as nature's gifts to you? Simple things like eggs. How come we are trying to demonize simple eggs and then trying to make it seem like, you know, foods that are just coming in are the ones that are healthy for you and the ones that you should consume, okay? So ancestral appropriateness basically means eat foods that come in their raw form, eat like your ancestors did. And this is not about blood group, okay? Or eating according to your blood group or blood type. This is simply eating foods that come in their raw and natural form that you don't have to do a lot, you know, to get it on your table, all right. Now, another thing I want to point out are your factory products. Okay. So try to avoid factory products. And what I mean by factory products is when you look at a product and it contains eight to 10 ingredients, I would advise that you eat foods that have just one to two ingredients. Okay. That is eat one to two ingredients foods. I'm not saying that, you know, you should not prepare your soup because you would ask me now that, okay, but I, I, I need red oil. I need uh, meats. I need curry, I need time, I need this and this and this and that. It's going to pass 10 ingredients to prepare my stew or to prepare my soup. That's not what I mean. What I mean is when you look at a single ingredient and you take a look at that ingredient list, try and make sure that whatever it is that you are consuming doesn't have up to eight to 10 ingredients on its ingredients list. At that point, it's no longer food for you, but it's now a factory product. So if you take a look at bread, by the time you look at all the ingredients that are contained in bread and you see that it's up to eight or more than eight or up to, you know, higher than eight, then at that point, you now know that it's not a healthy product for you. At that point, it's no longer even considered food, but a factory product. So by the next time you want to make semo or the next time you want to make that pound or the next time you want to make wheat or whatever it is that comes in a package, okay, that you want to consume, take a look at the ingredient list and try and limit the foods that you are eating to just one to two ingredients. You don't have to do so much for you to make a meal, okay? All right, so I hope that we understand that. Try to avoid your factory products. And then you have your minerals. Minerals, minerals, minerals. Minerals are elements, okay? They are made by nuclear fusion. Minerals are not always found in your food. You find minerals in your foods when the soil on which that plant or fruit grew has minerals in them, okay? So if the soil on which you are planting on or the soil from which you got your food from is devoid of minerals, you best believe that that food itself is devoid of minerals. Now, except you have your own farm and you eat your own produce and you, you know, you make your own manure, you... You give your plants and your soil exactly what it needs to have the amount of minerals that it should have, then this is totally out of your control. If you just buy your food, if you have no business farming whatsoever or growing your own plants or vegetables or foods, then you cannot control how much mineral is contained in a, in a specific food. Okay, so mineral supplements are very, very and highly recommended for your optimal health because you need them. Okay, you need them and they are, they have to be eaten. Okay. And if it if, if it's not contained in your foods, then you are deficient already in that mineral and it's not good for you. All right. So adequate minerals are very, very important for your health. If you cannot control where the food is coming from, then try to get a mineral supplement to help you. You would, you would, you, you would reap the benefits in the long run. All right. Now, another thing I want to mention is that your dieting is not actually dieting, okay? 
we have actually lost a proper way of eating food that when we now begin to talk about the proper ways of eating food, it now seems like you are going on a diet. Okay, you are not in a diet by going on a on a keto diet or going on a carnivore diet or going on a weight loss diet. It's the proper way you should actually eat your food. Okay, so when you have and when you shift this uh, mindset of oh, I am depriving myself of something, you know, oh, I'm supposed to be enjoying myself, but I'm just eating vegetables. You know, I'm just eating these avocados for the sake of my health. That's actually how you should be eating, and it's not you know dieting. It's just that uh our way of eating, our eating patterns have shifted that when it now looks like you or when you are eating healthy, it now seems like you are going on a diet. Meanwhile, you are not. So dieting isn't actually dieting. Do away with that mindset that, you know, you are depriving yourself or that you are, de or, or, or that, you know, you are missing something, some form of enjoyment on your plate. Mm -mm. You are not on a diet. You are eating how a proper human being is supposed to eat. All right. So, Let's move on. Another thing I want to mention is that some of us are actually addicted to sugar and highly processed carbs. Okay. There are some people, if you don't eat rice on a Sunday afternoon, you wouldn't feel it as though you've eaten food. There are some people that if you do not eat rice on a Sunday afternoon, you, you, you wouldn't feel as though you've eaten food. Okay. So if you begin to treat these things like an addiction, which it actually is, Okay, because you have been eating this highly processed and highly refined carbohydrates and, you know, seed oils and vegetable oils and sugary foods and processed foods, it has gotten to the point where we are actually addicted to it. Okay, so treat it like the addiction that it is. Okay, it's not only people that uh, abuse drugs or abuse alcohol that we can term as, oh, this person is addicted to something. You can be addicted to anything, even your, your cell phone, okay? So when you begin to treat your intake of carbohydrates and refined foods and sugar and pro-inflammatory foods, you would see that when you begin to eliminate them from your diet, okay, you would recognize the withdrawal symptoms, all right? So Let's assume you want to stop eating carbohydrates today. You want to start eating, you know, properly, okay? When you go about three days without eating these high processed foods, you'll begin to feel those withdrawal symptoms. Your body will tell you, you know, you will start starving, looking for what to eat. It would, it would seem as though you are missing something or you are always hungry. You'll be feeling miserable. You can't think properly. You are feeling sick. All these things are signs of withdrawal from something that you are already addicted to. And it's okay when you give yourself that grace and you know that, okay, I've been eating this thing for the past how many years since I was in my 20s or so, and you begin to withdraw yourself from it and you have these withdrawal symptoms. You recognize it for what it is and not that you are actually being punished for that thing. Okay, so when you recognize and you admit that, okay, I've been eating this for the past, you know, so, so, and so years, it's okay for me to have these withdrawal symptoms and you work on it. When you pass that 10 day limit, you wouldn't be looking like a, like a hungry, like, like a hungry dog looking for what to eat. Your body would actually calm down. Okay, so you can actually be addicted to your sugar, your carbohydrate foods, high processed foods etc. It would seem as though you cannot do without them, okay? And this is why the detox program is for 10 days. For those of us that are in the detox program, that I advise that you do your detox for about 10 days because that's the amount of time that it takes your body to, you know, soothe those withdrawal symptoms, okay? When you are withdrawing or, eliminate, or eliminating these carbohydrates and high processed foods, okay? So when you recognize that it's an addiction, then you can actually treat it for what it is, all right? Now, let's talk about price and quality. Now, when I recommend that you go on a healthy or proper diet, I, I have a few complaints that, oh, it's too expensive for me to eat like this. Uh, you know, the economy is too hard. I would rather just buy rice or buy gari and just, you know, eat and, you know, move on with my life. But the thing is, you would always have to pay more for quality food. Okay, you would always have to pay more for quality food. You would have to pay more for anything that is quality in this world. Okay, but if you are broke, if you, if you are not financially stable, 
then try and consume more of the most affordable healthy foods, okay? So if what you can afford is maybe rice and stew and eggs, try to eat more eggs than you normally would, okay? So go for the most affordable healthy foods and try and decrease your portion of the unhealthy ones, okay? And when you begin to eat like that, when you begin to make these healthier eating choices, then you your mental alert, uh, um, alertness also increases and you'll be able to tackle those situations in your life that, that, you know, decline your pockets, okay? So what I'm trying to say is when you begin to eat well, it tells on your overall health, okay? And you would be more mentally alert to then make more money and afford the things that you need for a proper healthy diet, Okay? So yes, you would always have to pay more for quality, but but it doesn't mean that if you do not have the finances that you that that you wish to have, that you should not even make an effort. No, okay. So look for the most affordable ones, like fish and eggs and meat or whatever it is that is healthy for you, okay. And try to consume more of that, okay, and less of the unhealthy ones. All right. Now let's talk about these marketing claims. Um, there are so many marketing claims that um, can seem healthy to you because they are marketing claims, okay? The point of a marketing claim is to try to make you buy something that you feel would be good for you, okay? Now, when it comes to your diet, I would advise, I would advise that you stay away from things that say this thing is plant-based, this thing has low fat, this thing has no added sugar, this is an energy drink. A, a naturally flavored, you know, product, a fat-free product, an artificial sweetener, a healthy this and that, a diet this and that, a fat burning this and that, a fatless this and that, a zero sugar this and that, and a no calories this and that, okay? So these are the top marketing claims I would like you to avoid because if you are trying to deprive or remove something, okay? Let's take, for instance, low fats. For something to be low fat, it means that it had fat in the first place and you are trying to remove the fat, okay? But when you 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 feel like, oh, fat is unhealthy for me, fat would make me get fat, I should then look out for low fat foods. If you want to lose weight, eat more fat, okay? Fat and, and, and um, the fats that you actually gain, fats, dietary fat and the fats you gain are not the same thing. Okay, maybe I, I would I would treat this topic next week. Okay, but they are not the same thing at all. If you want to get and if you want to get thin and lose weight, then you have to eat more fats. Okay, so stay away from things that are plant based. This naturally flavored. This things that have no added sugar. It contains another thing that would have uh similar effects to what sugar would do for you to sweeten it. Okay, Th stay away from things that have artificial sweeteners. Okay, or zero sugar or no calories. Okay, please. All these are marketing claims that I would like you to avoid, especially when you are buying, um, you know, products. And like I said, if you take a look at a product and it contains more than eight things on your ingredient list, I wouldn't advise you to eat that thing. Try to eat your foods as they come. Try to eat your foods as they come. A simple way of eating foods as they come is yam and egg sauce. Okay. A simple yam and egg sauce is, is, is good for you, okay? You don't have to do so much to produce a simple meal of yam and egg sauce. You can use fresh tomatoes and your simple eggs. Yam are grown. Yam, yam is grown from the earth, right? It's a plant food. So it's okay for you to eat things like that and not things that you have to refine and refine and refine and refine and refine and refine before you now sit in your kitchen and you then consume it. These are the things that are making you sick, that are inflaming your blood vessels, causing you to have plaque, leading you to hypertension, diabetes, the problem with sugar, and your body not being able to tolerate carbohydrates anymore. These are the things that are making you sick. Okay? All right. So with this, I am done with this session for today. Please ask me your question. Okay? Any questions that you may have, kindly ask me now. Thanks for this eye opener. I'm told that at a certain age, red meat is not healthy. Thank you so much for this question. Yes, at a certain age, especially if you're a hypertensive patient, you know, you'd be advised to stay away from red meat. At that point in time, if you check yourself and you eat or whenever you consume red meat, you see that it actually raises your blood pressure. I would advise that you leave it off 
for the time being and focus on actually getting better and then go back and eat that red meat and see whether it raises your blood pressure. The science or the concept behind red meat is that it contains lots of saturated fats, okay? And we see saturated fats as something that contains high LDL, okay? And like I've explained in my previous sessions, the problem is not your LDL or your cholesterol in total. The problem is what happens when that cholesterol is moving to where it's supposed to be. It gets stuck, okay? And the reason it's getting stuck is that your blood vessels have been damaged. And what is causing your blood vessels to be damaged is the pro-inflammatory foods, your sugar, your refined foods, your processed carbohydrates, et cetera, that is making your blood vessels actually weak, okay? So by the time you are dealing with all that and you then consume red meat that has high saturated fat, it, it, increases, it increases your cholesterol and it just makes it seem like, oh, everything has skyrocketed because of the red meat that you ate. If you look deeper, that's not the case, okay? So if you check yourself and you see that when you consume red meat or organ meat, it raises your blood pressure, fine. Leave it out and fix your diet, fix your health. You can eat other, other sources of food that wouldn't raise your blood pressure so much that would be healthy for you, okay? So when you have managed your, your arteries and your blood vessels and your hypertension, you can then go back and eat that red meat, okay? And see whether or not it actually has the same effect on your blood pressure, all right? So I hope that that answers your question, okay? Mrs. Susan. All right, any other question? Any other question? Can damaged blood vessels be repaired? That's the work of your of your of your blood. There are some there are certain things in your blood. Okay, if I if I want to start speaking in medical terms, your platelets, uh thromboblasts, other things, okay? That would help to heal those blood vessels. But once plaque has been formed, you cannot entirely get rid of your plaque, you can only reduce it, okay? And what is going to help you reduce your plaque is basically antioxidants, okay? And you get your antioxidants from eating foods that are high in vegetables and high in fruits as well, okay? However, this is a completely slow process and you have to give your body time to adjust okay it's not something it's not something that you do and do overnight okay so yes it can be repaired but that's not that's that's not left you know for you okay that's left for your body to just work on on its own provided that you are consuming the right things your body will take care of it but when plaque has been formed you cannot entirely 100 percent get rid of that plaque okay you can simply reduce it to the point where it doesn't have to obstruct movements of blood anymore, you know, and cause you to have high blood pressure. All right. Okay. Rice is a refined carbohydrate, not the healthiest for you. Okay. Mr. Imeka. If you can leave rice off, I would advise that you do. Okay. Remember, I said anything that you have to do a lot of processing to get it in your kitchen is not the best, okay? It's not the best. Yes, you can consume in moderation. You can definitely consume uh, moderately, okay? But it's not the best, okay? So try to eat foods that don't have to undergo a lot of processing before it gets to you, okay? All right, any other question? You mentioned 20 to 50 grams of carbs can be taken, if I'm not wrong. Are you saying that this is the maximum that carbs should be taken daily? Yes. That's what's recommended for you if you must eat carbs anyway, okay? Or if you feel like you cannot do without them or they are a major part of your diet. That's the recommended amount that if you eat on a daily basis, it wouldn't cause you much harm, okay? But many of us go above that limits, okay? So remember, carbohydrates are your choice. 
Okay, it's a thing of choice. You can do with width or without them. If you cannot do without them, then stay within the limits, okay, of 20 to 50 grams per day. All right, I hope that helps, sir. Mr. John. So what are healthy foods? Foods that come as as raw as it gets from nature, okay? Stay, try and stay away from foods that you have to do a lot of processing to eat, okay? And then your protein, your proteins and your fats, okay? Those are healthy foods. <laughs> it's almost like, okay, if I don't eat rice, what am I not going to eat, you know? And like I said, let's treat it as it is. Many of us are actually addicted to refined carbohydrates. It's the truth of the matter. You know, it's like if I don't eat it, so what else again is there to eat? Hmm? But it's something that you can you, you can do without. Okay? You can definitely do without it. And you can also replace with other things that are healthier options for you. Okay? I know it's a bit tough. It's a bit tough because that's what we are used to, okay? But what I would say is try to decrease your amounts while starting, okay? Try with actually decreasing your portions, okay? And increase your proteins, okay? Decrease your the portions of your carbs and increase your protein so that you don't get so hungry, okay? By the time you increase your proteins with limited carbs, then you wouldn't get so hungry to the point that you're always looking for something to eat every other hour, okay? That's the key because your satiety matters, like I said at the beginning of the session, okay? And foods that are high in carbohydrates decline that satiety, all right? So when you eat foods that are high in carbs, then within an hour or two, you would feel hungry, okay? And you would feel like you would even need something um, heavier, okay? So decrease those refined carbohydrates, all right? And then increase your protein foods, your proteins and your fat foods, okay? Increase them, all right? 